Ever wondered about the inner workings of the powerful cluster bomb? A weapon that's been the topic of much debate? Fired from impressive artillery guns like the M777 howitzer or the Paladin self-propelled artillery, these bombs can unleash destruction over vast areas. But what happens when one of these is fired? How do they disperse those many grenades and what makes them so effective? Today, we're breaking it all down. Stay tuned as we dive deep into the mechanics, capabilities, and controversies surrounding cluster bombs. Let's unravel the mystery of this potent weapon. As the cluster bomb is shot, the fuse initiates the expulsion plate, and simultaneously, the exterior shell explodes, dispersing the M42 grenades. As the cluster munition spreads out, it activates its ribbon and semi-arms its shaped charge. From this point on, its lethality is undeniable. The inertia mechanism then kicks in to set off the grenade. In the upcoming segments, we'll dissect this weapon's mechanics and discuss its strengths and potential downsides. So, keep watching for an in-depth analysis. Let's delve into its intricate components and workings. The rearmost part is the base burn assembly. Positioned just above is the propellant, included to give that additional push, allowing it to cover an impressive distance of up to 29.4 kilometers, or approximately 18.3 miles. This artillery base can house up to 80 M42 or M46 grenades, an astonishing amount of destructive force for such a compact shell. You might wonder how it's possible to fit 88 cluster grenades inside. The bottom of each grenade is ingeniously designed to be empty and shaped to accommodate the charge. This design innovation makes it feasible to line up 88 grenades consecutively, as illustrated in our animations. Directly above lies the pusher plate, linked to the expulsion charge cup, this mechanism ensures the grenade's ejection. Topping off the design is the fuse, vital for setting the artillery shell's various detonation modes. The shell measures about 937 millimeters from its point to the base and has a diameter of 155 millimeters, aligning with standard NATO artillery sizes. With a weight of 46.5 kilograms, it's quite hefty, especially given its dimensions and the 88 grenades it holds. For some context, Here's a comparison with an average human size. Such potent firepower necessitates an effective delivery system. And that's where the 155mm Taut Howitzer and the Paladin's self-propelled artillery come into play. The Paladin is equipped with a 155mm Howitzer and features a semi-automated loading mechanism. It can reach up to 24 kilometers using standard ammunition and 30 kilometers with rocket-boosted rounds. Its peak firing rate stands at four rounds every minute. However, our main focus today will be on its deployment using the 155mm howitzer, a masterpiece from the 1970s and often dubbed the King of Battles. Breaking down this artillery, we identify its fundamental components. The barrel stands as a vital component, serving to propel the 155mm rounds with precision. Counteracting the firing force, the recoil mechanism holds immense importance, comprising the firing base and the directional handle it enables controlled aiming. Notably, the breech ring takes shape from the finest steel and materials available, exemplifying craftsmanship. Accommodating both shell and propellant, the loading tray assumes a crucial role. Just above, the firing lever awaits its position. A safety cord offers the convenience of distant propellant charge activation. Lastly, the trail mechanism secures the artillery, ensuring stability upon discharge. Now let's delve deep into the inner workings of a cluster bomb fired from an artillery gun. In the process of launching a cluster bomb from an artillery gun, the fuse is checked and confirmed before placing the shell on the designated tray. A soldier then slots the shell using a curved tool, followed by adding a minor propellant charge. The tray elevates to seal the breech ring, and upon pulling a cord, the trigger mechanism ignites the propellant, propelling the dual-purpose improved conventional munition. These shells can travel up to approximately 24 kilometers with regular rounds and stretch up to 30 kilometers with rocket-boosted projectiles. Post-firing sequence of the cluster bomb. The culmination of this intricate process results in a formidable weapon of destruction. As the slide assembly locks into its armed configuration, a tension builds within the spring mechanism, poised to release its energy upon impact. The grenade's outer shell, meticulously engineered for controlled fragmentation, fractures into a multitude of lethal shards. These shards, propelled by the unleashed explosive force, transform into high-velocity projectiles capable of penetrating up to 2.75 inches of robust armor, 
thereby posing a substantial threat to even heavily fortified vehicles. The ramifications extend beyond armored targets, as the devastating anti-personnel effect of the grenade comes into play. The lethal shards fan out in a lethal pattern, turning the immediate vicinity into a danger zone. Personnel caught within this lethal radius face a perilous fate as the projectiles cause widespread damage, leaving little chance for escape or survival. In the realm of modern warfare, where versatility and effectiveness are paramount, the M42 grenade stands as a testament to precision engineering and tactical ingenuity. Its ability to seamlessly transition from deployment to impact, coupled with its capacity to dismantle both vehicles and personnel with lethal efficiency, solidifies its position as a potent force multiplier on the battlefield. M42 cluster bombs, also identified as purpose-improved conventional munitions, are designed with the intent of dispersing numerous smaller grenades over a wide expanse. However, significant reservations revolve around their utilization. Detractors express deep-seated concerns regarding their precision, contending that M42 cluster bombs scatter their contents indiscriminately. This, in turn, raises the alarming possibility of affecting densely populated regions and thereby placing civilians, including children, in grave jeopardy. Another formidable issue lies in the persistence of unexploded ordnance, which can remain lethally active for extended periods, posing continuous threats to civilians and impeding the progress of post-conflict reconstruction efforts. Moreover, the expansive impact radius of M42 bombs carries the potential for unintended and extensive collateral damage. This could encompass inadvertent harm to allied forces, critical infrastructures, and the displacement of civilian populations, further underscoring the multifaceted reservations surrounding the deployment of these munitions. We value your engagement. Don't forget to subscribe and do share your insights in the comments. Additionally, feel free to browse our range of engineering-focused videos.